everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Hearthstone Deck Tech, where we talk about um, the different archetypes and different things in the game of Hearthstone, as well as interviews with uh, different players and content creators. And uh, today we have something a little different. Usually we interview top legend players, uh, and that's always pretty cool, um, or content creators. But today I got a special guest. I got Shane from New Zealand. Shane, welcome to the show. Thanks, King. Great to be here. So Shane and I, we have an interesting story, right? So we're in a Facebook group, a Hearthstone like Facebook group, a mentorship group, and uh, you know we've communicated back and forth on there, and over like the past couple months, right? I would say like two months, and uh, you know yep. Shane, Shane has right. kind of developed into a, a pretty strong Hearthstone player. Uh, Shane, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, you know, just. Not 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 about Hearthstone, but I mean, I guess other games you played or other activities and hobbies that you have. Yeah, sure. So, I started out my card game sort of um, career or hobby in a way. You know, I want to make it into both. But with uh, Magic: The Gathering, uh, a friend of mine sort of introduced me to it when I was a bit younger, and just got playing that. And just it was a big part of my life to begin with. And then I took a break from it. And then a friend of mine just showed me this card game on his phone and I just could not get enough of it. <laughs> it's just, it just took me by storm and I, I haven't been able to put it down for like the last sort of two years. And, you know, I haven't been able to play as much as I want, but in the time that I've played, I've felt I've sort of made a few leaps and bounds in what I want to achieve. So uh, when did, what expansion do you remember starting to play Hearthstone in? Oh. Uh, it was like Mean Streets of Gadget Zan um, and the Whispers of the Old Gods. I remember opening those packs and uh, maybe the ones the one set before that, but I just can't remember the name. But yeah, somewhere around that that time period. Do you um, did you at the time did you have like a favorite deck or card or something that you like to play or build around? Well, um, I I really liked the different versions of Cthune, uh, like mm -hmm. Cthune Warrior was my absolute favorite um yeah. just to you know, just tank yourself up make your cthulhu huge and just drop it down for the win and i'd never seen anything like that in a card game before and it just sort of was like wow i want to play this like all the time <laughs> this is just so much fun to pull this combo off just got hooked on doing that <laughs> were you were you free to play when you start or i mean are you still free to play when you started or I, I currently still have not purchased a single like pre-expansion bundle. Mm -hmm. I have helped done the mini purchases, um, you know, just anything new that they sort of release with a few card backs, maybe mm. I think it's about $15 New Zealand, but it's quite expensive over here. And um, I just, I you know, I'm a pretty good grinder. I've played RuneScape for maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, seven or eight years and you learn how to grind in that game so getting money in house is just it's not that hard and it's something that i can i've done really well i mean i've saved up 6200 gold uh, for the next six already and wow. i've got my three free packs and you know i've got 65 packs sitting there ready for expansion day plus i still got to do my quest from tonight so there might even be a little bit more gold available and you know, it, the, the key with free to play is to just maximize your opportunity. And um, I've got a few good mates who give me their 80 gold friend quests, mm -hmm. and that really does make a big difference. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. crazy. I, I mean, I, you know, the thing with free to play too is like it's so restrict, so restrictive in terms of what you're able to build because you know any gold you have, it's it's a huge investment, like in what you decide to craft or create, or you know if you're just opening packs yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've definitely made a few mistakes in the past. <laughs> I've dusted a few legendaries that I shouldn't have when yeah. I first played it. You know, you do feel it when you're trying to recover from that. But yeah. I've done a lot of research and um, I've put, I, I know I've got a good plan in place, put it that way, you know. So I'm, I'm doing quite well. And I think, you know, when my personal situation financial wise is, gets better, I think I'll invest into Hearthstone. But, you know, I think that uh, at the moment, I'm just going to ride out what I'm doing now and just maximizing free to play as much as possible and getting as far as i can but it's going to get to that point where i want to be able to go to legend and i think it's just going to be a matter of um maybe putting a bit of money into it so we'll just have to see how i go but i want to try and get it free to play so yeah you mentioned that you, you know you, you're still on the climb you want to get to legend eventually um what has your progression in the game been like like 
you know, where have you been stuck or made uh, big leaps and bounds in terms of uh, ladder progress, I guess? Well, look, over the past eight weeks since me and you started talking and um, that I think I was what I'd hit maybe rank 10, which was the best I possibly have done. And the month prior to that, like the best I was hitting was 15. And I just wasn't quite breaching that rank 10 bracket. Mm -hmm. And then you reviewed some games for me and sent me some feedback. And I just absorbed what you said like a sponge and just applied what you had said to the game and just started understanding more about my own decision making and what the right move is at the right time and you know what's a good matchup what's a bad matchup i started focusing on on one deck as well too that was i think a big big thing was i chose bomb hunter it had a high win rate and i felt like i liked playing hunter and i could i could do it mm -hmm. and so i just honed my skills on that one particular deck i mean it got boring after a while but i just keep going and then i found myself in that first month after talking to you, I managed to hit rank four, which was the highest <laughs> I've ever achieved. And it was just, you know, the satisfaction I got from opening that chest at the end of the month was fantastic. And, you know, the last month uh, just been, I got um, rank five. Uh, didn't quite hit rank four, but I didn't play as much as I did in the previous month. So, you know, it makes sense. And um, this month as well, too, I'm strongly confident that I'm going to hit rank five consistently just due to those, you know, that little bit of training you gave me, gave me a little bit of support as well too and made me sort of believe in myself more as a player i mean it's pretty amazing like it was so funny because remember we, i and you know it's like the facebook group thing is so random it's just kind of like there you know like little mentorship program um I, and know. Um, I was looking for the right mentor and i saw you <laughs> and i read what you had written and i read like everyone else i was like these people just don't even think they take this seriously and i thought this guy actually takes this shit seriously so i'm gonna like message him <laughs> <laughs> So, but I mean, it was dope. Like, you know, and I, and honestly, cause you know, you, you never know what will happen. Like you could get coached and like, you know, maybe it doesn't click or whatever, but, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, to be fair, I, you know, I didn't review many games. I only reviewed like three or four games, you know, gave you a couple like resources you could look at, but you like took mm -hmm. to that as like a sponge, you know, you were on it, you know, you researched, you studied and like, I mean, that clearly shows like how just a little bit of advice and outside input can have a great effect on your understanding of the game. And it's pretty wild to think that you, you know, so your highest you ever hit was rank 10. And then yeah. you went to rank five consistently for the next two months, right? Which is a big step. Yeah, I mean, it is. The other thing too, I think it was just knowing that you've got someone there to bounce an idea off or tell mm -hmm. how they're going. And like, you know, you're into the game as much as I am. And it's important to have that sort of, um, you know, passion um, yeah. for me, especially because I, I love people who are passionate about things. I, I get really passionate, and to know that I can message you and just be like hey, part of the mentorship program, be like, "Hey, this is how I'm going. Can you look at this for me?" And the fact that we just have that, um, I, I suppose, just online connection, and you're in another country. It's it's, it's freaking awesome. I know, it's and wild. we just met. It's cool. I know. So when I go to I encourage anyone else. <laughs> program <laughs> yeah definitely I I, I I yeah i don't know if you guys want to join it. it's like a hearthstone mentorship program on facebook you can just find the group it's it's pretty cool i you know there, actually you're not the only person i've mentored on that program or coach there was a there's yeah. a couple other people but you know uh their mileage varies of course too you know like i think it, no matter what you want to be good at like if you want to be better at something you have to make the vested effort to try to be better and like you know you definitely did and you definitely are a lot yeah. better. So, yeah. But, so now <laughs> we're gonna hit legend. <laughs> so, so you know, the next goal is legend. Like, you know what I mean? Now there's a new expansion. There's like new stuff. Like it's time to, time to push. You know, to mess around with new things and then and then make the move to to legend, which I'm sure you can hit. So. Yeah, uh, my, one of my favorite times in the inspection in, when the expansion comes out is like the first few weeks when mm -hmm. everyone's just playing jank. It's like just freaking awesome it's just a chaos put out there no one knows what to do everyone's just playing these random crazy ideas and then you just see the dust fall and you just pick up what you like and just learn yeah. it really well you know yeah i mean typically like you know when i'm like really try harding as soon as the expansion comes out i play the the strongest most efficient deck pre-expansion so usually those are usually like a really aggressive type of strategy like token druid or something because it always has a consistent opener or like Miracle Rogue, just because Miracle Rogue is so powerful in that type of matchup. But uh, 
because that's how you get like easy levels because everyone's like you know trying something new and messing around trying to new ideas seeing new synergies but if you just play something efficient and really like linear like it's easy wins but that can get boring <laughs> <laughs> but uh what was that man i was gonna what was i gonna mention to you um shoot what was i gonna say so a new expansion is coming out um we mm-hmm. talked a little bit about like what cards we're looking forward to. Um, what cards were you looking forward to the most? Um, in particular, um, I just really like the idea of the um, Highlander decks. We only have one copy of you know everything in it, and you, you get a good bonus from that. I particularly like the Hunter one because I can have two King Crushers in the deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty sick. You know, and I just I just love doing some crazy combos like that, you know, but um, one deck I really wanted to uh, put sink my teeth into and play was uh, Cyclone Mage. Mm. So I'd be um, interested to see um, how it is with Reno in the deck, you know, some kind of like, you know, single um, Highlander Cyclone Mage. I've seen a few theory crafts out there. And they'd be quite interesting, you know, just puts a right and they're also chucking a quest in there too why not just run mm. all the new mechanics there you go um man mm. i'm a, did you play when reno jackson the first reno jackson was around no but as soon as i found out about the league of explorers mm. i went back in time on youtube <laughs> and had a look at what the meta was like back then it was like wow bro <laughs> was I, sick. it was super sick like I, I, you know like the thing is um reno dex like you trade off the power of one single card for the lack of consistency in the rest of the deck, right? Because if you play something that's aggressive, you have 15 pairs of cards, you know, to double the chances of drawing certain things at certain times. But if you are oh, only yeah. playing singletons, you know, you've cut the chances with those particular cards in half. So it'll be interesting to see, like, how strong these particular Highlander singleton cards are. Um, yeah, they are pretty strong. I mean, you know, like the the one that makes that gives you a card based on the situation, like that is pretty nut nuts. So um, it'll be interesting oh, yeah. to see how strong those cards are. Yeah, I think another deck that would be worth mentioning would be the new Taunt Warrior. I think that is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I man, I you know it's it's the wild 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 west right now. Like anything could be good. You know, or will be good, and you know, I, you know, it's kind of weird. Like, I think in the in the age of the internet, um, metas develop like really quickly, which is good, right? Because deck ideas get refined pretty fast. But I think exactly. experiment experimentation kind of dies really quickly too, because once like, I, I, or go ahead, sorry, it does. T- you're right. Yeah, like once a once a deck comes out, or once like four or five good decks come come out, people are just like, "Oh, this is guy played this to legend. This is the best deck." So then they just net deck it and they just start playing that, uh, without really yeah. opening up into new ideas. And I think like if you if you especially the wild community, the wild community mm-hmm. is all about experimentation, and like they're they're really really good wild deck builders. Um, and, you know, I, I hope this new expansion really like blows it out because i just don't want to see bomb warrior every game you know i don't want to see that like i don't want to see like 50 percent of my ma- matches being cyclone mage like i don't want that you know what i mean i want to see some new stuff heal yeah Druid, i know, know you mean like, that it got a bit stale with that tournament you know i, yeah. I watch all the house tournaments and that one most recent one where they played specialist it was just one class like i'm glad they've gotten rid of it yeah it's so much better seeing someone bring four four decks. You know, the meta was bigger before Specialist. You know what I mean? Mm. But then recently, I'm seeing this heel druid on the ladder, and it just came out of nowhere. I mean, like yes, it was around, but no one was playing it. And all of a sudden, it just became good overnight, almost. <laughs> you gonna, know, I'm gonna There's... try it out. I, I haven't I haven't seen that deck. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually build that tonight. Maybe mess with that. I ran into it and was like what am i supposed to do here <laughs> there's just no way through and and you know i imagine the people playing it like I, I got them down really low health and you're within like you know hero power and a bomb toss and a leroy away and then all of a sudden the board's filled with tournament oh, and yeah. i can't get okay yes yeah, sweet ass <laughs> oh i'm just gonna heal up and um you know play more of these guys <laughs> um 
what was I going to say? You know, you mentioned uh, earlier that you want to make the push to legend and things and how it, yeah. it's helpful to have someone to communicate with to kind of like give you mm -hmm. reassurance to, um, you know, as you make the climb. And, uh, you know, that was always like before I hit the legend the first time, that was the number one like obstacle for me was whether or not I could really do it. Because I would hit like rank two or rank three and I'm, you know, I, I'm playing like a handful of games a day. But um, in my mind, I'm like, you know, I haven't hit legend and I don't know if I'm playing enough games or if I'm good enough to hit, to hit it with the amount of games that I play. And it wasn't until I got like a coach, like someone else to like watch the games and be like, yeah, bro, you're gonna hit it. Just keep playing, keep playing, you know? So I think that's a that's a big important point that you that you made about like you know having reassurance from the outside that you're gonna accomplish your goal you know it was uh, definitely one of the biggest things for yeah. me. So. Yeah, I, I, it's gonna play a big part in my climb as well. So, and you're right, I'm I'm exactly where you were. I'm like, am I playing enough games? Is this gonna happen for me? But the thing is, is you know we have that mentorship going, so it's like I I feel I will make it. You know, so yeah, you will, man, you will. I, and, you know, honestly, like, hitting legend is a byproduct of your improvement as a player and your win rate, right? So if you're playing 60, you're winning 60% of the games, you're going to hit it, you know, in this many games. If you're winning 55% of the games, it's going to take you considerably more games to hit it, right? But you will hit it, you know, you're going to get there. So it's just a matter of playing at the highest percentage you can because you can't win all the games. Like, you know, there's RNG, there's luck. Yeah. But you can just limit the amount of times you make mistakes. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how well you do. I actually haven't been playing on the ladder, like, almost at all. So I think my, my account's, like, rank 11 or something. I got I to gotta, I gotta at least get to rank 10. Like, you know, it's pretty wild. Like, rank 11. That's the lowest I've ever been in, like, I don't know, a while. But, um... So what, are, what other classes or decks are you looking to towards, towards playing? Um, sorry, I think I'm, am I, am I in? Yeah, you're here, you're here. Uh, so, so, um, look, honestly, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to see that something new come out from this next set. And, you know, I'll crack open my 60, maybe if I can get it close to 70, I'll be pretty happy. My 70 odd packs, um, on the day, I'll be quickly looking at what legendaries I have and mm -hmm. throwing something together, you know, and just mucking around with it and just seeing how I go and, they're just keeping a close eye on what other people are playing and just work out what I'm going to use because I really I, I don't think I'm going to be hitting Legend this month but in the following two once um, things settle a bit and um, I can really put my put my head down I reckon I'll make it within that period and we'll just have to really see but I, I really do want to play like a really big Hunter deck <laughs> just like go. how Hunter used to be um, you know with the Devil Saw eggs mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. know just Triggering big stuff and um, you know, bring cheating out big minions. You know, I love that stuff. <laughs> so, out, out of all the cards spoiled, like, what are the two cards that, or like, what's the card that you hope you pull in your seventy packs? And what is the card that, on paper, just like at a glance, you think looks the most broken? Um, I just have to Google the name of it right right now. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I don't know any of the names uh, of them. So. Oh, I know. It was the one um, that you get to wish for a card. Like, you mm -hmm. play it, and it gives you a card based on the situation oh, the that you're in. Right. Yeah, like, that. that's just insane. Like, I I really love stuff like that. It's it's like rolling Huffer all the time when you're mm -hmm. trying to play Animal Companion, you know? It's like, it just gives you the best outcome for what your situation is. And that's a new touch to the game that we really haven't had before. You know, I mean, sometimes the game's nice to you, sometimes it's not, you know. But in this case, if you play this card, it's, you know, it's giving you an upper hand almost, you know. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild. That's a pretty wild card. Yeah, you know. Um, I mean, look, we've got stuff here like cast 10 random spells for mage, you know. I mean, that's going to cause a bit of hectic chaos, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the new druid quest, you know, that's the other one. Um, you have to leave your mana, like, up you know and mm. sort of end your turn with none played to trigger it i mean yes it's it's quite interesting and then you choose one card that both things combined i mean 
we've all played Key Pistorette, Staladris, and Token Druid, and you've seen how powerful he is when you even just get one extra power of the wild, or you get um, the Raptors, summon the Raptors, yeah. and give a minion plus taunt, you know? Just having two of any card that you, that you played out, cool. it's just such a strong combination, you know? So it might be a bit slow in getting off, but um, that deck could, you know, potentially see some play. You know? exactly. Quest Druid. Just, you know, fun stuff yeah. <laughs> to look forward to anyway. That a Zephyr card, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, something of Zephyr's, like that card you were talking about. I, You know what I like, yeah. too, is, well, I'm on the fence, because I don't really know, I, I think it's going to be good. Obviously, it's going to do, the game AI is going to try its best to give you, like, the best possible out. But the only thing is, like, how strong really is the game AI, and I, I figure it's got to be pretty strong, right? Like, if, if there's a way to get lethal, it's going to give you lethal, right? Or if there's a way to clear the board, it'll yeah. clear the board. I heard it was like, you know, if you needed a board clear, you could rely on that card. And mm. for an aggro deck, sometimes you need a board clear. You yeah. know, I mean, I I play aggro decks mainly. And then, you know, when you play up against another aggro deck and they have a board clear, you know, that that is just really painful sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, having having one on, on as, you, as you as a player against them, it just puts you at such a bigger advantage, you know? Um, and... The thing is, is with board clears, it's like, you know, sometimes you might not want to run that particular one in your deck, but having a card that is a body plus pulls you a spell, you know, think Ethereal Lackey, it's a bloody good card, you yeah. know. It's just something similar along those lines. Just more value. Love value. <laughs> yeah, super strong. I, and, you know, like, it, it, it always gives you an answer, right? So, like, maybe you don't even know what the answer is. And it gives you yeah. like all answers and like you know then you can like be like oh i got this card so i mean it must be telling me that there's this line of play or something which is pretty wild that's pretty strong i guess mm. yeah you'll be just discovering those hidden lethal combos and putting stuff together you might not normally figure out you know and i learned a lot of doing that um from watching the, the guys play in the tournaments mm. and things like that i watch so much I, I watch it religiously like at work you know <laughs> if I'm little, i work in a call center you see so it's quite easy for me to get oh, away watching a bit of, and on the side in between calls you know um and so i just have half up all the time and just be like cool I'd watch it at work come home you know eat food and then just jump on play do my quest put together what i've learned message ken find out what the play, um how he's going find out where i'm going you know um what's happening and then just I was pretty much just living and breathing house and for like the last two months, you know, <laughs> just to take again. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, hey, man, like, you know, final thoughts, like what, what advice would you give to like players who are free to play, um, you know, or, you know, maybe not, maybe, maybe they're not spending hard on a game or whatever, but uh, they, they're looking to improve from whatever point they're at in the game. Like what advice would you give those players? Uh, number one, I would say join the mentorship or have a friend who you can bounce ideas off and, uh, you know, to keep you motivated as well as you helping them out too. Um, secondly, being a free-to-play player, your quest is so important. Find out what time they come out. Make sure you complete them every night and try and get as many wins as possible to collect those extra 10 pieces of gold. And the other one too, um, don't spend your money between expansions. Just Just save it. Just save it all because can buy so many more cards when it comes out the other one i just want to say is just keep doing it because um it will happen for you and lastly is just make sure that um you just look out for those ways where you can improve on your play and not make the same mistake you made in the last match because that can hold you back great man thank you shane thank you for jumping on the show really appreciate it. it's fun and i'm excited to see you hit legend soon man Cool. Thanks so much, Ken, for having me. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you.